haven't been here before welcome to our office really great having you here um, first of all I know there was a lot of things you could have been doing tonight and you chose to be with us so we just want to know want you to know that we're gonna make your time worth it okay <laughs> we'll make your time worth it okay deal yeah, deal. all right so um, again let's see my name is Sue Twiddell Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. <laughs> I'm a regional vice president here with Primerica. I've actually been here about 16 years. And it's so funny when I say that because I start thinking back and I go, gosh, it's been a long time. But, um, you know, I go back every once in a while and I start thinking about where I was, what I was doing, and what I'm even here. So I was literally a dental hygienist back in 1998. And I didn't know what was going on as far as my finances. I mean, I was like most people. I had credit card debt. I was kind of paying it off, you know. Um, I was trying to save, but I didn't know what to do. So I was really one of those people, like I think a lot of people are, that just went, gosh, if someone would just show up. And someone did. And I sat down with them, and I, by the time we were done, I'm going, something's wrong here. Why didn't I know what you just showed me? And what I wanted to share with you tonight is some of the things that I kind of found out that I had started thinking about and I didn't know what was going on and just kind of started putting two, two together. So is that fair? Mm -hmm. All right. So one of the things that I knew, I absolutely knew, is that there's a whole group of people called the wealthy. Any everybody with me on this one? Yes. And they have pretty much everything. I mean, their kids are going to college. It's not a matter of if they're going, it's are you going to my school up, right? Yes. Is this not true? Yes. Does anybody know people like that? Because yes. I knew quite a few of them. Uh, they have business opportunities and ownership. Most wealthy people own their own businesses. They don't work for somebody else. How about this? Financial freedom. Come and go as you want. You know, it's funny. Well, I guess I was a hygienist. And um, some of my patients would just they'd take off to Europe and back and go on vacation every three or four months. And it was like, well, I want to be able to do that too. But that was the wealthy. Okay? And then, of course, they have all the financial, all the financial advice that they want. Why? Because the financial advisors, they want to sit down with the people that have all the, yeah, all the money. It just makes sense. So I knew this, that every that there was that whole group of people up there. And honestly, can I be honest with you guys? I wanted to be in that group. I mean, I, I, that would be pretty cool. I also knew there's another group of people down here called the not-so-wealthy or the financially dependent that the government was actually taking care of, right? And they had things like free preschool and... Um, but not only free preschool, but actually free childcare. Mm. I actually know people, some of um, some friends of mine, that as they were coming up, they had some kind of bad times. But as they were getting back on their feet, they were actually able to have all of the childcare paid for. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Mm. Like, oh. College grants, if their kids get they qualify, they get to go. Financial support, and also all sorts of opportunities. And this is a good thing, and I mean, I realized this, and I knew it was a good thing, because quite honestly, we don't want a lot of people living down in the wash or something. So it's, it's good the government's doing this. It's a, it's a big deal. But you know what I also knew? I knew I wasn't here, and I knew I wasn't here. Which meant, I'm here, I'm somewhere in between, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that was interesting. Knock on the wall and see what happens. <laughs> Honest, I didn't touch anything here. <laughs> and this whole group of people, my group of people is called Main Street Families. 
Now, that's the teacher that's making $30,000 a year. It's also some of those small businesses that might be making two hundred and fifty dollars or $300,000 a year. But honestly, if we have to work for a paycheck, we have to work to make money. If we can't come and go as we want, yep, that's me. Okay? And some of the things that I knew for me was that kids, we wanted our kids to go to preschool. I don't have kids myself, but my, my uh, sisters and brothers do. And preschool, guess what? It was expensive. Anyone here have small kids? A couple of people. A couple of people. Okay. You have small kids now? <laughs> Already? <laughs> um, these kids are getting bigger, but he has twins on the way. So, yeah. So, um, but anyway, expensive, like $600 or $1,000 a month. It's ridiculous. But we know it's really important, so we want that to happen. How about college? Everybody wants to go to college, or if we don't want to go to college, it's because we don't want to go. It's it's not that I don't I don't want to have to say I don't want to go to college because I can't afford it. Just yeah. Well, so we go, and then what happens? We have all the student loans. Now I was really really lucky. My dad was a business owner, so I was able to go to college, and I didn't have to worry about it. But you know what, you guys? I got to tell you the truth. That wasn't all of my friends. They walked out with student loans and starting from behind. Another thing that I knew is I would love to have a business. Again, my dad borrowed some things from up there. He was actually a business owner. He could actually send me to college, which is really, really cool. But I thought about it for a while, and I walked out of college with a degree in dental hygiene. And what did I do? I went and got a job. Now, my dad had told me over and over and over again, don't work for somebody else. You'll never get to where you want to go. You'll never have the same opportunities. So I go get a job. And it was okay for a while because I got to make my own days. In dental hygiene, I don't know if any of you guys know it, you actually can say what days you want to work. So I was pretty cool with this. And you were paid on salary or on commission, so I didn't have to clock in and clock out at the beginning. But that day that that, that time clock showed up, I was like, I am so done. I do not want somebody else to tell me when to be here, when not to be here. It was like, oh. So I always wanted to own a business. But it's expensive, you guys. How do you do? I mean, think about this. It costs maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars to own a business, right? Okay, and we might be able to get a loan for that. That's not, that's not the big deal. But how do we stay in business long enough to make it profitable? How much does that cost? Which means that that group of people up there gets to be business owners, and we get to work for them, living paycheck to paycheck and working to build somebody else's dreams. Is that okay? It wasn't okay with me. It just wasn't. And then financial services. Oh my gosh, financial advisors. I didn't get any financial advice until I was, I honestly, I was over 40. And by the time I did, it was like, would someone just please sit down with me? But the problem was, is I didn't have $250,000 to invest so that somebody would actually want to sit down with me. And I think that's most of us. Are you guys starting to see a problem? We want what that group has. But the biggest problem is, is we don't have access to it. So what do you do? I can tell you what I did. I turned to what I already knew. I turned to the banks, and I turned to the lenders, and the insurance companies, and corporate America. There was a huge problem there. Are the banks ever going to get us wealthy? No. You put your money in a CD, we get less than a percent rate of return. We're never getting wealthy there, right? Okay, how about the lenders? Credit cards, what are they at? Oh my gosh, store credit cards, like almost 30% rate of um, interest rate? Okay, that's scary. Life insurance, the insurance companies, I know they're not there for me. I got, guys, I gotta tell you, I had some of the worst stuff in the world, and they didn't care. I called them up and I asked them about it, and they could have cared less. So I'm convinced that they're not there for us. And corporate America, I don't think corporate America was ever gonna make me a business owner wasn't happening. See, nobody was knocking on my door. Anybody knocking on yours? 
because it just wasn't happening for me. And the worst part was, is it was okay with me. I mean, literally, I would go into work, I would work all day, I'd come home, fix dinner, we'd do whatever, you know, watch TV, whatever, and then turn around and do the same thing the next day, and then take a vacation every once in a while, and this whole cycle was okay. And what kept happening is the wealthy were getting wealthier, and we, I was just spinning. See, it didn't become personal for a little bit longer. That all of a sudden, in the early 2000s, my husband got laid off. Oh, now it's personal. Corporate America lays somebody off. Doesn't it become personal right then? All of a sudden, it's an emergency. I gotta make something happen. Or what about when you wanna retire and there's no money to retire? Or your kids need to go to college and there's not enough money for kids to go to college. Something's wrong. It shouldn't be like this. And you know what? A group of us said, it's not right. We can do something about this. We know that we can change it. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So do me a favor. We're going to welcome Wade up here. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what our solution is. Okay? So how's everybody doing? Good. 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 Oh. It was like in unison at the same energy level. Uh, <laughs> so it kind of hit me all at once. So uh, my name is Wade Skalski. Wade is fine. Uh, not Mr. Skalski, please, except for you. All right. <laughs> um, and so listen, what I want to talk to you guys about is, is uh, Sue talked about the access guy. All right. That uh, we're starting to figure out that maybe that the system that's been given to us isn't necessarily going to get us to where we want to go. It's getting other people where they want to go, but maybe not it's getting it for us. All right, and uh, the first step in that process is figuring that out. Understanding is that like, look, we're all working really hard. Everybody here works hard. We're all doing the best that we can. We all created a life for our ourselves. It's pretty good, all right? But it's okay for us to maybe want to see is how can we improve upon that? And the first step to improving on a situation is having uh, basically the right information. And the, if you're gonna look at, um, if you're gonna look at it some, what you wanna have, you wanna look at someone that's already done what you're trying to do, right? We want to model what someone has done. Well, what we're talking about now is money. So let's talk about, let's think about what the wealthy do. Well, the wealthy have a very specific approach to their money that's different than our approach to the money. The first is that they lock in advances for a family. Uh, generational wealth. There, once a, a family achieves a certain level of generational wealth, a certain level of human capital, which is just a fancy word for saying uh, their family does things a certain way and their kids do things a certain way, all right? It's just knowledge. It's a fancy word for knowledge. They lock those in. They make sure they pass those gains on to their children. They make sure that they lock those gains in uh, using financial advisors and using other tools. The second thing they do is they develop habits. They understand that uh, you don't have to be hitting home runs all the time. If you're hitting singles every single day, use the baseball analogy in business, uh, at the end of a year, you've done really, really well. A lot of time, what we all uh, sometimes what we fall into with our thinking is we want to hit a home run, you know, get get rich quick. We want to do all these types of things, and that's not how, not how the wealthy think. The wealthy the wealthy take a long ball view of, or I mean, a long term view of getting wealthy and keeping wealthy. They leverage experts. They understand, like, look, there's only does anybody here have more than 24 hours in the day? <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody like I do, and I want to know that secret, right? We all only have 24 hours in a day. It is impossible for us. Uh, to work past a certain point. At some point, you're going to hit a wall and you're not going to be able to do anymore. All right? But we don't realize that is in, in, the, in the Main Street families, we all think we can work our way out of problems, right? And so we work really hard and work really hard and work really hard, but there's this uh, concept out there of leveraging experts that we can actually partner up with people uh, and the wealthy understand this. They have they have a lawyer, they have an accountant, they have, you know, they have a marketing guy, they have all these people to help them maintain their lifestyle so that they don't have to work on those things or even learn about those things. And the other thing they do is, uh, besides leveraging the experts, they cultivate strategic partnerships. Now, this is, oops, go back, 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 go Okay? But you don't necessarily call your mechanic up and say, hey, how can we help each other with our businesses? Right? That's all what a strategic partnership is. And you leverage an expert, someone that knows something to fix something for you, like fix your car. But for uh, cultivating strategic partnerships, you actually enter into relationships with other people that where we can accomplish more together than we can apart. All right? This stuff is not complicated. 
But the thing is that nobody tells us these things. The wealthy all know it, and they use these four principles to grow their wealth, to maintain it, and to pass it on to their children. So the thing that we get really excited about, that I'm really excited about, is, is how, do we, how do we cultivate strategic partnerships? Who's there for us, okay? If I, go, if I pick the richest person I know, and he's a millionaire, uh, and I try to go to one of his partnerships, that person may not be interested in talking to me because I'm not a millionaire yet, right? So who do we go to? Who's there for us? Well, one strategic partner that we found is the Power of America. Primerica has got $2 billion in market capitalization. They've been around since 1977, and they have a track record of designing services and partnership concepts for Main Street families, for us. There's, they say, like, look, we want to be your strategic partner. They're, they're not, they don't care about the people who make five, 10, $15 million a year. Those people already have plenty of strategic partners. They want to help us. And I think it's really cool to understand that there's a company out there that is pointing at our group of people people like you, people like me, that we're not where we want to be, and they're like, we want to partner with you. So that's step one, is that there is a company out there to start that process with, and that's Primerica. Now, the, the great news about that, too, is that they do it in a couple different ways. I'm going to talk to you about the ways that they do it for financial services. Brett's going to talk to you about some other ways later. But what I want to let you know is, is that Primerica helps us to understand these concepts, that they bring the tools of the wealthy to the Main Street families like us. So we can leverage a company that will give us the same, the same answers, the same tools, and those are some of the financial services products. An example is logging in advances for a family. This is what's called double term insurance. It's basically, we don't need to have an insurance discussion. Who wants to have an insurance discussion? You do, I always think it's you, okay? But basically look, in one word, we borrow a bag of money. If something happens, if I have, a, I have a life insurance policy, if something happens to me, my wife is taken care of. There's a bag of money that I've borrowed, that if something happens, she's good. That's locking in advances. She doesn't have to go back to where she was before because that we're together and as a family, we've made a plan, if something happens, she doesn't go, she doesn't go backwards. The other thing is that Primerica allows us to do on the services side is it allows us to develop habits with something called a mutual fund. Very simply, you could do a mutual fund for as low as 50 bucks a month, 25 bucks a month, and get in the habit of saving. Now, uh, Brett tells a really good story about how when he started when he was younger, I'm gonna steal one of his stories, that he started with 25 bucks, right? Well, 25 bucks isn't gonna get us rich. But if you get in the habit of saving 25 bucks and you get used to it, all of a sudden you're like, hey, listen, maybe I can do 50 and I can grow from there. The other thing that they let us do is leverage experts, manage accounts. Look, I don't wanna sit all day long and learn about stocks and bonds. Does anybody else want to do that? I describe our managed accounts as we have the smartest nerds in the world in my basement. And Primerica basically has this managed account system where these guys, all they do is they sit around and they think about ways to help people with their money. Okay? Uh, that's, a, that's a leveraging of an expert. And then finally, there's a cultivate strategic partnerships. That's Primerica's and our advocates. Look, everybody that's in this room that's involved with Primerica is an advocate for you. If you have a question about anything, anything, we'll figure it out. If it's money, we definitely know how we're gonna figure that out. If it's something else, we probably have a relationship somewhere where we can point you to. And that is a strategic partnership that you can have with Primerica, but really when it boils down to it, you get to have it with us. You get to have it with me. If someone calls me up, if a shack calls me up and says, hey Wade, do you have a recommendation for something like this? If I don't know, I go to Brett. If Brett doesn't know, we have a big, giant amount of people that we can go to. And that's what cultivating a strategic partnership is. We're really passionate here about closing this access gap. Okay, the access gap basically is, what that is is that, is that it's just the information. Everyone here, we work really, really, really hard, but if we're not working on the right information, we're not gonna be able to close that access gap. But what I'm really super excited about is that we can provide a two to three generational plan for families, right? We give them the access to the information, we give them the access to the experts, and we, we show them, look, in three generations, your, your grandkids can be in that top group of people. And what I just think is so, so fired up about that is that before I knew anything about Primerica, before there was no way that was going to happen. I was brought up. My parents, my dad's a my dad's a construction worker, and my mom basically uh, helped him with the business. Okay, uh, in a nutshell. And they didn't teach me anything about money at all. Nothing. I got a credit card when I was in in high school, and I would go to the Village Inn and have a skillet and a and a giant Belgian waffle four times a week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> which is which is which is silly, right? I knew nothing about money, but because if I, I'm starting to have this information, I'm starting to talk the information, I have access to the people, my great grand or my great grandkids, my grandkids will be able to do all of it. I can pass that knowledge down to them. And can't we get excited about that? Because we all agree that no one out there is giving us information, right, in terms of the access gap. No one's giving that to us. And so I just get really fired up about being able to talk about the two to three generation game plan, the, the partnerships, not only in this room, but with Primerica, to get the people the information. Because I know this. 
that if Primerica wouldn't have showed up at my door, I would not have the information now. And I and that was Primerica showed up at my door six years ago. Right? I can't tell you the changes in my life that have happened uh, because of Primerica. And what I'm super fired up for is that whatever you think about Primerica, we can get you the right information. And so I'm just really fired up to let, let you guys know and hear about that. Um, Brett's going to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, maybe there's a quicker game plan for it. Maybe we don't want to wait those couple generations. Uh, and maybe there's something that we can be uh, instead of going on the on the long term plan. And then maybe there's a shorter plan. So I'd like to introduce you to Brett Sears. I love what I'm, I'm watching Sue and, and, and you guys are crushing it. Like we've been working. It, it's hard to get up here and communicate this, right? And and so I appreciate the effort and the clarity, and hopefully y'all got something from that. And my job really is to is to kind of talk about you know, what we want our life to be. And it's funny is is that there's some really cool stuff that's that that's going on um, in my life and in our life. I was I was visiting Tony a little earlier. Said, look, I've been here 18 years. And we've been in business about five weeks, right? We, is we really started in January. So it's an interesting kind of space to be able to, yeah, well, wait a second, you've been here 18 years, but five weeks because we're just rolling out kind of how we're building this. And, and really, I'm an emotional guy. I love a good fight, right? I, when I got in the business, I was 22 years old or $24,000 of credit card debt. The only thing I knew about money is I didn't have any. I came to a meeting like this, and they threw up on the wall that the cash value life insurance industry was screwing and tattooing people. And I was like, that's, that's bad. And it turned out that my college savings program was in a universal life policy that ate itself. And, and so I got all fired up and said, man, no one knows this. And said, let's go change an industry. And over a 10 and 15 year period of time, that happened. But one of the challenges is I realized that it's really easy to fall kind of into this track of what are you doing? And not think, have, have any of you guys ever started a behavior and you didn't really examine it and then you woke up two years later or five years later and you had habits, you don't know why you had them, you just had them, right? And then you try to, I'm the only one, like no. six of you. <laughs> right? And then you try explaining it to, this is what's really bad. Then have you ever tried explaining it to somebody else and as you're halfway through explaining it, you know you sound stupid, but then you defend it? You ever had that? And then they're like, that doesn't make sense. You're like, well, you're you ever had that? And now, and all of a sudden, we kind of looked at this and said, well, wait a second here. Right? Like, what are we doing? And, and this is really, like, what's our passion? What's this drive? There's something inside me that loves a good fight. Right? I want to do something different. I want my life to mean something. I want to know that we made a difference. But I also want to take care of my family. So we looked at this and said, that two to three generation game plan, that's not a little deal. Right? Most of us didn't come from wealth. Most of us have grandparents or had grandparents at one point, right or wrong, right? All of you are grandchildren of somebody. You know what this means? If you're not financially wealthy right now, your grandparents didn't run this plan. Your parents didn't run this plan. So we can all go, well, wait a second here. So we've got step one is we've got to make sure that the two to three game plan is taken care of. It's funny. My, my wife is, is pregnant with twins, right? We're, we're holding out to, to next Friday, um, right? So just, you know. All the positive prayers, but as she's healthy, things are good, right? Um, but we went yesterday and, and met with the lawyer to work on the trust and, and do all of this wonderful stuff again and all. And we're talking, and I'm sitting, I'm a little kid from Iowa that grew up in a small town that parents at 15 years old got our house foreclosed on, right? At 22, I got my car repossessed, right? The only thing I get, just everything we knew about money was bad, like just bad. And I'm sitting in this lawyer's office, and my wife and I are sitting there, and we're planning about multiple generations of wealth. And what are we doing with the business? And, then, and we're like, how, and I'm sitting there halfway through this conversation, like a school kid. <laughs> and you guys aren't excited, but that fired me. I'm like, I can't believe I'm having one of these conversations. And the lawyer that's talking to us is taking me seriously. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Look, any of you ever found yourself, I, I, I never forget the first time I went on like a, a really high-end home tour. Never forget this. It was top of, top of a seat of Boulevard, Raymar Country Club. Never forget it. I was in the business like three weeks and they said it's a Sunday night. We went, we walked through and I sprinted through that thing because I thought security was going to come because I had no <laughs> business in that house. Right? I don't know why I'm sharing this tonight. I'm just, you know, it's a little cathartic for me. Right? But we talk about like the shift that can be done. When I came in three weeks, three months before I got involved, I had gotten the car repossessed, was dead broke. Every phone call that was coming was a creditor saying, right, Mr. Sears, you owe us. 
Now, this was 1995, 96. There weren't cell phones. There wasn't voicemail. There was just these little voicemail machines, right? So when you called, if you had it up loud enough, anyone could hear it. That's a bad thing when you're dating, right? That, that was, <laughs> right? Because I knew exactly how to keep it loud enough so I could hear the voice but not have anyone else hear it. And I'll never forget, the girl I was dating, all of a sudden the phone came on and a woman had called, but it wasn't loud enough for her to understand what was going on, but she knew a woman was calling, so I was in trouble. I'm like, no. <laughs> but, but now my twins, we're talking about multiple generations of land in a few years. Why? Because we had access to the education tools. Now, there's two parts to this. One is the part that Sue talked about. Two is the part that Wade talked about, about the services. But the second part is, what if we want to do? What if we didn't have to take two and three generations? What if there was a way to do it in one? What would it take? Well, we live in the greatest country in the history of the world. I truly believe that. The greatest opportunity, right? To say, man, you can start from nothing and build it. The system is set up if you're willing to do it. But see, in order to do that, it's got to be through ownership. Here's the reality upon reality. We're in the financial services industry. We sit with clients every day. We sit down and build financial game plans. We cannot get a client wealthy in one generation. And anybody in our business that sits down with someone and say, if you follow my plan, I'll get you wealthy, is lying. Because we don't make enough money to save enough money to get wealthy. Well, how do you know I make a half million dollars? I know. And for you to replace your lifestyle, you need $8 million saved. For you to get wealthy, you're going to need $15 million saved. You probably got to save some serious cash in the next 20 years, that 15. Y'all with me? So we said, look, now, so that's why we've got to take care of this two to three generation game plan. But how many of you think it would be kind of fun to do what you want with whom you want in any fashion and style that you want? That just sounded fun for me, right? I am not a good employee. You tell me where to go and what to do. I might tell you where to go and exactly how I think you should do it, right? So that doesn't always work real well. And so we sat there and said, okay, if we wanted to legitimately close this access gap in one generation, what would we need? Well, we need access ownership. But we have, in order to do that, what does that mean? Well, we need to be able to harness what we call that Main Street Entrepreneurial Spirit. You know that, look, we've all been at work and we've seen people show up late and go home or right or wrong. They bridge and moan, they complain about everything, right? You guys know those folks, right? Now, there's other folks that show up early and go home late. They say, man, I'm going to do whatever I got to do. They put in the time, they grow their skills. They, they approach it like it's their business, even if it's not. They're the ones that say, man, there's got to be something more. There's got to be something more. If I can learn, if I can grow, if I can do this, I'll do it. That's that entrepreneurial spirit. The problem is, as this group of people, they say it may, takes most small businesses five years to make a dollar. Well, can this group of people survive for five years without making a single dollar profit? No. So having the spirit is good, but it's not only the spirit. There's got to be something else. So we said, man, we have to have a leverageable support system in place. Right? What's, I don't understand. What's that mean? Look, most small businesses start like this. Take the mechanic, the way he was talking about, right? The guy's working on cars in a garage, and then all of a sudden his buddy's like, hey, can you, can you, you know, rebuild my tranny? He's like, sure, I'll charge you 1500 bucks. If he went to the garage, it'd be 2500 so his buddy's like, no problem. So on the side, he does it, and then another buddy does it, another buddy does it. Next thing you know, he's got a bunch of side work. Y'all make people in construction, side work. Side work turns into a small business. And they're doing the front end work. You guys all know this, right? This is how, I don't care if you're an accountant, I don't care if you're a lawyer, I don't care where it is, you start your own front end deal. The problem is, when it's one or two, you just do the work. But when we turn it into a business, there's all sorts of back end stuff that has to be done. The challenge is, the mechanic's good at the front end, he's good at turning the knob, right? He's good at, at, the, at, at building what he's got to build. Payroll's not his strength, liability insurance isn't his strength. Ordering supplies isn't the strength. Making sure that vendors are paid isn't the strength. But all that stuff needs to get done, huh? So he's in the front of the shop, but the back of the shop's calling. So all of a sudden, he takes himself out of the front of the shop and goes into the back of the shop. What happens to the profit of the front of the shop? It goes away. So now he's going to the back of the shop, but the front of the shop's calling. So he's got to go there. So he either has to pay somebody, but he's not an expert to train him. So now he has someone else that has more control over a certain part of his business than he does. How many think this could be a small problem? For a small business owner. Destruction, and it happened because I've seen, I know thousands of small business owners, and most of them aren't as successful as they thought they'd be, but they work their ass off in their passion. 
If we don't have access to the support systems in place, it's going to be only on us, and most of us don't have the skill set to do it. And then we also need a path, a transitional path. Right? I was broke, but I was making a thousand bucks a month at my job. I couldn't leave what I was doing to come do something else. Like that would be irresponsible. Now I was irresponsible, but not that kind of irresponsible. <laughs> right? Go, could you imagine this is the greatest opportunity in the world, but we said, hey, quit your job, come do something you've never done with people you don't know in an industry you have no part of, you're gonna be great. <laughs> the people that would say yes to that aren't the people like you, aren't the people we're gonna grow with. Right? I was having a good conversation with, with Wade the other day, right? We were talking, we're like, he goes, so Brent, who, when, when someone asks you, who are you looking for? Like, what do you grow with? I go, here's my sentence. I look for people that have maxed out their opportunity, but haven't maxed out their capacity. I don't care if they're the barista at Starbucks or they're an executive at, uh, at Princess Cruises. They, the vehicle's only going to pay them what the vehicle's going to pay them, right? Right? You have to realize that was kind of cool. Phone rang them to watch. <laughs> <laughs> right? So we said, man, but we said, man, we could build a path where someone could be great at what they're doing. They could love their job. But we can show them how to make a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars a month part time, and we can transition them out. They can learn the front of the uh, front of the house and learn how to leverage the back of the house. They can legitimately build something without stress and anxiety. So, man, if we had an opportunity where we could leverage the spirit, have a leverageable support system or transitional path, we could legitimately provide access to ownership to this group. And if we did that, we'd have a real shot to make a change. Well, that's what we did. See, we are the business incubator designed with the purpose to create and sustain high-level entrepreneurs. That's what I do. If you ask me what I do is I work with entrepreneurs. In the last 18, 19 years, we've learned, studied, and practiced going, look, and my job isn't just to work with them. My job is to teach people how to become successful entrepreneurs. How do you leverage? Right? You saw Wade talk about the four principles of success, the four principles of the wealthy. That's not just in the financial services product. I spend my entire day talking about locking in advances. My entire day talking about developing the right habits and leveraging experts and cultivating strategic partnerships. Because when we master those four principles, we have the ability to create such strength in all things. Well, primarily has been around 35 years. We've created more six-figure earners and more millionaires than any company in American history. This isn't something we're trying to figure out. Now, what we do, though, is after 35 years in the track record we have, we still have a market of 70 million people where no one's coming but us. Why are you here? Because if we really want to make this difference, the 20 of us aren't going to change the world. We're talking the 200 of us aren't going to change the world. 2,000 of us, 20,000, 200,000 might start. 200,000, why? Because it's the same principle. How many of us lay in bed and think about, man, there's got to be something more. I have a 10 and 12 year old. I remember bringing them home from the hospital, putting them in their crib. And, and I don't know if everyone makes this promise, but I made the promise and you lean over. I think a lot of people do. You lean over and, and, and you tell them it's going to be different. That you're going to deliver. That you're going to make sure their life's amazing and they're going to have every opportunity and every choice and you're going to give them everything you can and all that stuff. And you make that emotional commitment as a parent. And then life goes on. And a lot of us can't deliver on that because we don't have access to the tools or the resources, but we're like, hey, we're doing okay. And what this is, is an opportunity to never blame it on it again. If we don't know the tools, then that's one thing. But if we do and we choose not to, that's something different. So we said, man, we're going to get emotional about this. We're going to talk about it. We want to build a legitimate path, but there's some things we know we need. We need a low capital entry. What does that mean? can't cost a lot of money. If we're going to build with the 70 million people in the middle here, a lot of us don't have an extra thousand, two thousand, or five thousand dollars of discretionary cash just laying around saying, I'd love to go into business, here you go. So we can have the greatest intentions, but if we don't have a capital entry, if people can't get in and actually start building, it doesn't matter. We said we needed to do it in a partnership platform. Why? Right? So this is our symbol as a company. We said, man, what if we had a financial services company that were the experts in financial services? Our Americans have 2,000 people in Duluth, Georgia, that work for the home office, the corporate, that build and design financial products specifically for that group, and they are the experts. Look, I do not dream about beta coefficients and standard deviations and asset allocation portfolios. Like, those aren't things that I care about. Except 
when one of the clients, one of the families we serve may, needs to make sure that their asset allocation portfolio is appropriate, it's really nice to know really smart folks that, that they, they love doing. And my job is to just make sure they do it. We've got an amazing back office support company that says, man, we're going to provide the resources and tools so you don't have to invent them. You don't have to reinvent them. You don't have to create them. You don't have to run them. The system's done so we can have a high-level service that's committed. Because ultimately, we want to give folks with the desire to be a different, that Main Street entrepreneur spirit, an opportunity to charge. And then it needs to be worth it. Look, we could have the greatest crusade in the world, all the support system. If you don't make enough money to do it, it doesn't really matter. We all had other things we could do. These chairs aren't that comfortable. And so we said, man, how do we do this? How do we make sure that the time investment is worth the return? How do we make sure that we're going to ask somebody who's maxed out their vehicle but hasn't maxed out their capacity? Say, man, if you come play a part of this thing, if you're contributing one level, whether it's a supporter, it's an advocate, or it's as an associate, there's going to be value. And we said, okay, well, what are those pieces? Well, we said, look, we want to build a business, right? We, 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 our team is Team Access Forever. We talk about these six pillars, and one of them is that there's a place for everyone. Tonight is not about making anyone do anything. It's about telling our story and finding out what resonates with you. We, we build our business by growing our advocates, our associates, our allies. We want to grow allies. We want everyone in our life to understand and support what we do. Why? Because it's a really nice thing to talk to people who know us and have them go, man, what you're doing is pretty cool. And we said if we made sure that everyone in our family's lives understood and supported what we did, we'd be a little bit stronger. And so tonight, if you were invited, just as an ally, if you understand the gap, the gap that we're trying to close and the work that we're doing, and you look at the person that invited you and said, you know, that's pretty cool, I'm excited, I'm proud of you, that's awesome. We've done our job. We're going to grow advocates, people that are emotionally involved with what we're doing. It's funny, I met, I met Tony because I know Chuck, and I've known Chuck a long time, and Chuck's, Chuck's a staunch advocate for me, right? We've gone through, he's recommended stuff like that, and Tony talks to someone, he's like, no, you got to talk to Sears, right? So all of a sudden, Tony shows up and says, I got to talk to you, Chuck said, I got to talk to you. You understand that that's someone who's actively involved with what we're doing? That's actively involved and says, man, I understand the passion on, I understand the fight that you're on, and I get to meet an amazing young man. I don't know if he's going to take advantage of this opportunity, but man, he's got an opportunity to see our story because someone else says, man, I understand what you're trying to get accomplished. Right? That advocate group is one of the most powerful things that we can create. And then we're going to grow our associates. There's going to be people that say, man, not only do I understand the story, not only do I want to be involved, but man, if I can be profitable along the way, that sounds pretty good to me. He said, okay, well, let's create some spaces. So we created a position we call GAPS. They're gathering asset partners. Well, what does that mean? Well, there's 10,000 people. Think about that. This is still blows my mind every time I do it. There are 10,000 people turning 65 years old every day for the next 19 years. Can we all agree that's a ton of people? This is the first generation that's ever had a 401k or an IRA. A 401k or an individual retirement account, This is the, their parents had pensions. That's this number of people that have never had large chunks of money. They've made 40 grand, 50 grand, 60 grand, 80 grand, $200,000, and they've been saving in their IRAs and their 401ks. And now they're getting ready to retire, and they have 100 grand or 300 grand or half a million dollars or a million dollars, but they've never talked to the financial advisors before. Do you think that that could be a problem? If people who don't have access to a lot of education and sophistication walk into a financial advisor with $911,000 on a piece of paper, do you think maybe, just maybe, that financial advisor might be excited about seeing that client? <laughs> so we sat down and said, what if we could just give that group of people access to the right tools? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what if we could just create that space? And so we have people that come get licensed with us that have no interest in building a business, but they said, man, what if? See, a million dollars of assets in under management, the managed accounts of weights talks about, pays our GAP $4,300 a year. Now, that's not a lot of money, but an extra, if all of you on the first of the month had an extra $350 in your account, how many of you would find something to do with it? But the part that fired me up is $5 million is $1,800 a month in passive income. Now think about the, the couple that's 55 years old, that for over a 10-year period of time, they just have find a half a million dollars a year, completely spare time. 
And at 65 years old, they've got $5 million in assets. They're leveraging the street and need to partner. We're doing all of the work. The average social security check is $1,269. We could show someone how to grow more than that in a couple years by changing the lives of people who need Why couldn't we change the world by creating that space? He said there's going to be part-timers. There's going to be folks that need to make an extra $500,000 a month that love their job. They love what they do. Right, my friend Donna, love her, no problem. She's an amazing teacher. Loves teaching. I don't know if she loves the, what she's doing. I don't know, but <laughs> right, but loves teaching. It's not about quitting your job. It's about man, but if we can make an extra thousand bucks a month, wouldn't life be a little bit easier? Just a little bit. Could you imagine having people who love what they did? Firemen and police officers and engineers and teachers that love what they did, pastors and politicians that loved it, but just made an extra eleven hundred and sixty bucks helping a couple families. Close this gap for that family. That starts to make a difference in their lives. There are going to be some part-timers that are like, you know that whole love my job thing? I ain't one of them. <laughs> Great, let's have a space for it. What if we can build a business, transition from a path to learn step by step by step? How do you grow? How do you leverage? How do you support it? And run an incubator. Someone says, here's how you do it. You don't got to reinvent the wheel. Why would you? I've been doing this for 18 years. Why could, if I taught you what I learned in 18 years the next six months, if I'm a good teacher and you're a good learner, couldn't we collapse some serious time frames? And then there's something we call our team owners. One of the reasons why we said ownership can close the gap in one generation is there's something different about owners than employees. I am not putting a judgment on what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to talk about the system for a second. An owner has access to revenue, passive income, and profit. As employees, we have access to revenue. Passive income is getting paid for work we did before. Profit is getting paid that other, by off of income that other people are doing. And revenue is the stuff we're doing today. This makes sense? At our job, we put in time, we get paid, right or wrong. Do most of us get paid based on work we did before? No. Do we get paid if we train someone else to do what we do and they're still profitable within the company? Do we get paid for them doing the work that they did? No. Is the company more profitable though? Yeah. See, the company, an owner can leverage these three principles. As an employee, we leverage re revenue. So we said, okay, well, 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 what if we wanted to do something different? So what we did is we said, look, passive income. If you had $15 million of assets under management, maybe it takes you a year, five years, 10 years, I don't know how long it's going to take, but it'll pay you $100,000 a year in passive income. What if you taught 30 people how to find a million dollars each over a year, five years, or 10 years? I don't know how long it's going to take. There's an additional $8,300, $100,000 here. That's $200,000 of passive income helping close the gap. Revenue. You build an office that helps 30 families a month. There's 21 of us in a room. That means each of us have to help one family a month plus a little bit. The motivated ones help too. Can we agree that's not overly aggressive goals? Right? But that pays an extra one hundred fifty dollars to $200,000 a year in revenue. And then my favorite is you build a vice president. See, we realize that the only way we're going to close this gap is to leverage our opportunity. Say, man, let me teach you what I know and get you there faster, better, and stronger. It's not about me making a budget. It's about developing owners. We said, man, if we could raise entrepreneurs, and they just did half of what we did. The company pays $6,000 a month. That's $72,000 a year in profit. No, I'm not the greatest at math, but I figured this out. One is seven to seven hundred or seventy-two. One is four, 240, 244, 210, 284. That's three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year if you develop five vice presidents to do half of what you might be doing on your own. Now maybe that takes a year, two years, five years, ten years. I don't know. But I sat back and said, wait a second. If we can make two hundred grand in passive income, two hundred grand in revenue, and three hundred fifty thousand dollars in profit, that's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Maybe it takes a year, two years, five years, ten years. I don't know how long it's going to take. But I got a question. On 60 grand a month, do you think you might be able to save enough money to get wealth? We said, look, we're going to build a system that closes the access gap in two to three generations because no one else is coming. But if we can build a business based on closing the access gap, we can show the gym folks how to close it. That's what you're here tonight to learn. Whether it's as an ally, it's as an advocate, or it's as an associate. We can't do this alone. 
Tonight's about having folks get emotionally connected to the fact that when there's a problem, 70 million of us are stuck. There's a solution. By providing access to the education, the tools, and a path to ownership, we can legitimately stand in that gap for Main Street families and give them a roadmap back. And the opportunity is legitimate and strong. America's got $2.9 billion. I call them our $2.9 billion venture capitalists. Their job is to write the checks that never bounce and tell us to grow it as big as we want. We can have 15 people in a room, and we can have 150,000 licensed people. They don't care because the problem is big enough and the opportunity is there. Tonight's about creating that space. We are a six week old company. We started from scratch and said, okay, we are going to grow this thing and we are going to, we are going to have some fun. And, and I'm really, really excited about where we are and the fact that we're here. Right? Look, I, I used to run a meeting with 200 people, right? We got 20. But we also ran one with six. And 20 is going to turn to 50 and 50 is going to turn to 100 because we're going to build. But the most important thing is my job is to raise entrepreneurs, just to start people through this process. And it is so fun to watch people grow. And I'm excited as we just kind of started something. We just this year rolled out our, our team access, our logos and stuff like that. And what we did was, you know, I'm a big sports guy, so we built all these things and stuff like that based on this. And when someone, right, when someone gets started with us, they go on our roster. And when someone passes their test, they become a player, right? And so we, we said, man, we're going to have some fun with that. So we got our logo on there and stuff like that. And over here, and, you know, it's we don't buy our team names, right? So it's a superstars, Primerica, and then player on it. And so this is the first one we've done publicly. I'm really, really excited about this. But this guy I am so fired up with this is we just got reconnected a, a couple of months ago and I sat with him and I'm like, he was in the business a while ago and I'm like, hey, this is how it is. And this is what we're doing. And, and it's just, I, I, I watched him grow and raise families and just do something special. And, it's, and there's a look in his eye that says, man, I want to be an owner. I want to be, I want to learn this thing. This isn't a game to me anymore. I really I believe that I'm supposed to do something special. And it's literally been here like six, five or six weeks, past this test, going through. So I'd like to recognize our first player. And I'm so excited, the awesome Damon Ellis. Be right here. Awesome. And then I got two more. I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited. This couple, very, very, very excited. I've known them a long time. Uh, it, it, it's amazing. Uh, you know, is she's actually a, a teacher where my oldest who's high functioning autistic goes, and so I got like I got an ally there. She works in special needs, and so we bonded over this. And every once in a while, I get this. He's doing great. If you have no idea how absolutely amazing you know that is, she's made that transition for him really, really special. Um, and and I just I adored this couple, and and they've gone in and had a million things go on in their life, and we just said, okay, look, we're gonna take this slow, and we're gonna create something. And, and, you know, they had a lot of serious family stuff that's happened in the last week. And, and it was like, well, let's just take it and see. And I'm just, I'm so proud to be in business with friends, with people that, that I know have, you know, different options and paths and goals, but just the ability to say, man, maybe there's a space, there's an opportunity to do something. And we don't know what the future is going to look like and where the space is, right? They're, right? They're, they're, they're part time and just kind of like what they're doing, but there's some pieces, but then there's this entrepreneur that, and so it's just, it's fun to drink. And it's just fun to think about what's possible. And they both took their test and passed their test. So really, really excited. We got two new players, the awesome Doc, Bob and Doc. <laughs> Bob's like, I don't want to go up. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, and and they're, they're nice shirts. But stand up for me. Look, David texted me, he's like, can I wear it? So we got a model. Like, it's good when someone says, I want to wear it, right? Ooh, it's an odd, right? So you pass your test, you get it, hell, it's good, right? So um, really, really, really excited about that. And, and, and one of my goals, as funny as we do this, is um, we've got like eight people taking their tests in the next couple weeks, and, and we're just growing. And it's really exciting to watch, right? We've got folks that are taking it and learning. Like, we're so close to so much. And this is about developing and growing assets, right? For me, and I, and I was talking to Tony, but look, I spend my entire day growing assets. This is all I need. Licenses are assets. You never have to start over. 
Skills are assets. Once you've got them, you don't have to learn them. Again. Relationships and associates and assets, they're assets. It's about the sense and feeling of our that we never start over again. Look, none of us are where we want to be. Is that all a good sentence? All of, didn't all of us think, I don't care how old you are, didn't all of us think we'd be further than we are right now when we were thinking, when you we were nine, how many of you were going to be whatever you were going to be by the time you were the eight? Like, you're like, yes! And then you're like, oh, shit. But you know what? None of us are where we thought we'd be, but none of us are where we were. We get to lock in those advances. We get to lock in those assets. We get to grow every single day and say, you know what? We can take the, the tools of the successful and we can lock in our advances. We can develop the habits. We can leverage experts and we can cultivate strategic partnerships and we can build and grow this. And if we do, as a support system, we're on top of it. And the time is now. And you know what? We're all going to push, get pushed. We're all going to get challenged. But you know what? It's so fun to do this with a group of people that say, man, I want to be a part of something. I'm so excited for you guys. I'm so excited about what's coming, what this year's about, about the growth of the challenges. It's amazing. So uh, the next move, you know, we, we're going to be back here on February 25th. There's going to be two more Sears boys in the world at that point. So that'll be fun. Hi, all of you. All of you. Uh, right? But please come back. But we got to grow. We've got training back here on Saturday, this Saturday from 9 to 11. Right? We open our you know, we open our books, we have to t-shirts, and it's like, look, here's what we're doing. Here's what we're part of. Let's break this thing down. How do we build a business from scratch? We're goofs, but man, we take what we do incredibly seriously. If something triggered inside you, come join us. Get together with the person who brought you. Get your questions answered. The worst thing that happens is you best get on that two to three game plan, two to three generation game plan. It's not okay that you and I aren't wealthy and our kids are our kids' kids aren't wealthy. It's not okay if we don't get financially independent. We've got access to the education. We've got access to the tools. We've got access to the resources. We can make things different. So thank you guys so much for coming. Hopefully, you know, we'll be around. If you have any questions, we'll hang out, get your questions answered, and welcome aboard. Best opportunity. <laughs> What, 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 what? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Once it's done, it's done. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>